whatsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one, and whatsoever Allah leaves us say, none can show him guidance. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah alone, and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final messenger. My dear viewers, welcome once again to another live edition of Ask Kuda, which the 29th, the 28th day of Ramadan and the 29th night of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us just a couple more days of Ramadan is done. We hope and we pray that Allah the Almighty would accept our fasting, our qiyam, our recitation of Quran, and obviously um, our dua. Uh, our phone numbers should be posted, and you should see it on the bottom of your screen. And I guess we already have some callers, so let's take uh, the first caller today. Assalamu alaikum. Zinat from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Zinat. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad, uh, first of yes. all, I want to mabru you for your Umrah, and you are a very lucky person. Alhamdulillah, yes, indeed, I am lucky. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, and I thank yeah. Allah for and giving me this opportunity. It is, believe me, and please remember me and especially my son in Makkah in your dua. Insha'Allah, Sister and Zinat. May Allah bless you and your you. family and Amin, happy and blessed Ramadan. Amen. 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 I have just one question for today because most of the still in our area in Orlando, Florida, most of the uh, masjid uh, are, some of them are not allowing this year the Rawi. So it is mm. mandatory for the men to go to the masjid far away for Tarawi or to do like my son, my husband, and me, my daughter. We did pray at Jama mostly at home Tarawi. So it is it, it is mandatory to go far away for them or mm. it was okay. Thank you, Sister Zinat. As a matter of fact, the Tarawi itself is not mandatory. So whether you pray it at home or you pray it in the masjid, it is okay. Obviously, it is preferable to pray it in the masjid. But as you said, the masjid are closed because of the pandemic and the lockdown. So praying it in jama'ah at home, inshallah, would secure you the same reward. Thank you, Zinat from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Amatullah from Ireland. Amatullah, welcome to ask. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the program. First of all, I would like to, to pass my belated condolences for your father. May Allah grant him Jannah and all Muslims to have passed away. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Thank you, Sister Amatullah. May Allah bless you and your family. Ameen. Thank you for your beautiful dua. Can you hear me, Sister Amatullah? I have one question. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, what is your question? My question is, uh, I want an explanation on how uh, how it is compensated, like during Ramadan when, when married couples increase the prolonged sexual intercourse during the day time. Uh, can mm -hmm. I know how, the, how this is, uh, like, I know it's, it's past two months, but for those who can't past two months, how can they compensate on this? I got your question, Sister Amatullah. Thank you. Uh, violating one's fasting uh, through having sexual relations, number one, you would invalidate the fasting that day, if it is on the day of Ramadan, in addition to the person must resume fasting, even though the day is invalid. Uh, then they both must repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they have gotten involved in a major sin. And thirdly, the, there comes the kafara, the ransom, the expiation for that sin. By fasting for two consecutive months, two consecutive months, you say, well, that's very harsh, that's very hard. 
And this is initially to ward people off from indulging into this activity while fasting. And uh, if the person cannot fast because of sickness or ailment, which is going to last, in this case, the alternative is to feed 60 poor persons. In case of fasting, each and every individual of them will be required to fast though. So the husband and the wife both have to fast for two consecutive months. May the Almighty Allah grant us forgiveness and guide us to what is best. Assalamu alaikum. Ibrahim from Germany, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, ya sir. Uh, I have I have two questions for you, inshallah. Okay, go ahead, Ibrahim. Uh, uh, the first question, the first question is: I live in Germany uh, and I am an individual here, so I want you to tell me if I can able to pay the zakatul fitri, how much in money I am going to give out because. I, I, where I am living, I don't see any potential pass in which I can give my zakat to Fitrito. Maybe if you can give me uh, any recommendation where I can pay to any charitable organization. And if so, how much as an individual I'm going to pay uh, in, in euro? That is my first question. And the Ibrahim, second question is... Uh, where are you originally from? Excuse me? Where are you originally from? Where do you come from? I am I am originally from the Gambia. The Gambia. And do you think your family back home in Gambia might have Muslim poor neighbors that they can give them the zakah or not? Yes, 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 that is possible. Okay, excellent. So now you can ask your family, you guys go ahead and give, since you are one individual, the value of uh, 2.5 kilogram of rice, which I believe it will be like maybe seven, eight dollars. If I were you, I would give 10 or 15 euros. This is Sadaqatul Fitri per person. So you call your family and tell them, I want you to buy that much rice, not according to the value of the Gambia, but according to the value of what you, the place in which you're living in, and distribute them among the poor people, Muslim poor people in Gambia. Your second question, Ibrahim, please. Uh, thank you. My second question is, uh, if I have a savings of uh, 1,000 euros, how much uh, can I pay out of that 1,000 for uh, zakah? In fact, Ibrahim, you don't owe any zakah because your saving is below the nisab, which is zakah. The nisab which a person should pay zakah once he reaches it is the value of 85 gram of gold, provided you keep that much for an entire lunar year. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ghulam from the UK, welcome to ask with a ghulam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I have a very, very quick question. So a few days ago, I opened my um, uh, my my psalm. So when I broke my fast, I realized that uh, it was an adhan on my phone and not in my local masjid. And in mm -hmm. total, there was a time difference of two minutes. So on my phone, the adhan went two minutes before my local masjid. So shall I do a khada of my psalm? Well, if you actually broke your fast based on an assumption that it is already Maghrib time, whether because you have seen sunset and it was hiding behind a cloud, or because your phone adhan or alarm went um, off and you assumed it is Maghrib, then later on you realize that, well, it's not Maghrib. So spit out what is in your mouth. <clears throat> And resume fasting for the two minutes or the three minutes or whatever time remaining, <clears throat> and you're not blameworthy. Thank you, Ulam from the UK. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. Tanvir from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you, Sheikh? 
Alhamdulillah, welcome to Ask Kula Tanvir. My question is, should we follow Doi Fadid? Should you follow what? I'm sorry. Should we follow Doi Fadid or Wik Hadid? Well, unfortunately, Tanvir, your voice is breaking off. Bad connection. So perhaps you can send your question on the Facebook page or the control will take your question and convey it to me, Tanvir. Next, please. Okay. Please try again. So as you say, brothers and sisters, that today is the 28th of Ramadan. Uh, that means the last odd night is going to begin in a few hours. If you're in the Middle East, uh, in a few minutes, actually. And it is a night of the 29th, the last chance to witness Laylat al-Qadr. There is a possibility it could be on any of the even nights for a reason or another, as we spoke before. So that means we only have two nights left. And this is something not to be missed. This is an opportunity not to be missed. Our scholars used to say, when the horses are approaching the end of the race, they speed up to their utmost. Likewise, the believers, they don't calm down, they don't sit and they say, well, I've already witnessed Laylat al-Qad. I know which night was it. It was uh, on the 27th or on the 25th, and now it's time to relax. No. Not before Ramadan is over. Then we'll talk about what to do after Ramadan, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Mudassar from Finland. Assalamu alaikum, Mudassar. Wa alaikum as -salam. It's very good to see you. And uh, I saw your photo the other day, and you look really uh, handsome in Kaaba. MashaAllah. Barakallahu feek, Mudassar. May Allah bless you and your family, and thank you for the compliment. I mean, uh, the question, Sheikh, is that uh, let's say during the day in Ramadan, if some non-Muslim friend visits, so um, sometimes it's rude to not offer anything. So am I allowed to offer some food to to that uh, friend who visits during the day in Ramadan? Jazakumullah khairan. Jazana wa in the beginning of Ramadan, some people asked me, can we open the restaurant in Ramadan and offer food for non-Muslims? And the answer is no, because I'm not supposed to offer food when Allah Almighty ordered people to fast. So when people rejected faith, I'm not also supposed to offer them food. Likewise, when they come to my house, I'm not supposed to offer them food if it is the fasting time. They are supposed to respect our rituals. Then after fasting uh, is broken, as you know that uh, Muslims are commanded to be very generous. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Hadith, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al Let whoever believe in Allah and in the last day to honor his guest. But when we have a conflict, which is it's fasting time, so no one is eating. Only women during their menses, those who are sick and the minors, those who are very old and they cannot fast, but if they are physically fit, Muslims or non-Muslims, then I'm not supposed to feed them while we're fasting. Assalamu alaikum. Salman from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh salman. Welcome to Ask Wood. How are you, Akhi? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, so I wanted to ask you a question which is basically, you know, regarding zakat al fitr. So, now. for example, um, so if, if my wife has a baby which, uh, for example, is three months old, Mm, pregnant, so do I have to pay the zakah on the baby? Okay. Let me just uh, clarify your question to the viewers. 
because you said that your wife is pregnant. She didn't give birth yet, right? No, right, right. Okay, because it makes a big difference. If you have a child who's only one hour old, like if any child was born at night on the last day of Ramadan, then you should give zakah on him or her. Zakat al fitr But the fetus in the womb of the mother, no, you don't give zakah on. He hasn't come to life yet. Even though Uthman ibn Affan used to do um, as a means of giving thanks to Allah the Almighty. So if you want to give, it will be voluntary. But it is not obligatory on one whose wife is pregnant to give zakah on the fetus. Thank you, Salman. Whether the fetus or the baby is three months old, first or second trimester, it doesn't matter. Assalamu alaikum. Nah. So, zakatul fitri or sadaqatul fitri, which we have many questions about, we know that it is an obligatory act of worship. As the hadith says, Farada Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sadaqat al-fitri sa'an min tamrin aw sa'an min sha'irin aw sa'an min zabib. What do we understand out of that? We understand, number one, that it is hard, it is obligatory to give sadaqat al-fitr. We will learn in another hadith why. But for now, it is mandatory, like zakah on wealth exactly. But it's not mentioned in the Quran. I know it is not mentioned in the Quran. But in Surah Al-Hash, the Almighty Allah commanded us to follow his messenger in any of his orders or prohibitions. So he said, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَقُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Okay. I think we have some callers. Sister Amna from Pakistan, welcome to Ask Wala. Uh, I want to ask you two questions. Sister One is Amna. For my parents. Yes, please. Oh, she feels weak. So, what we're supposed to, is it okay if they don't fast and they'd give the fidya, which is like feeding some maskeen? And can you explain who, what's the difference between a maskeen or a needy person? Is it the same thing? And I and I want to ask you one more thing. Um, I'm confused about zakat. Do we have to pay zakat in every single thing that we own, like expensive shoes or bags or furniture, every single thing if it amounts to the nasab that we even use or even like watches? And can you explain this to me? Sure, Sister uh, Amina from Pakistan, thank you for calling in. Number one, your dad is not that old. 65 is not really old, okay? And 65 and 70, people are fasting. You come here in, in the Haram and you see people 85, 90 years and they're fasting and performing Umrah and walking on foot, alhamdulillah. But don't misunderstand me. Sometimes a person is 50, and cannot fast, he's excused. Sometimes a person is 40 or less and cannot fast, they're excused. When the doctor advises that your hemoglobin is very low, your blood pressure is whatever, you're diabetic, uh, you are, your immune system is very weak, you need to take the medication on time, you need to keep drinking water every couple hours. In this case, and based on the advice of a reliable Muslim doctor, you're permitted to skip fasting. If the condition is temporary, you fast some other time. If the condition is permanent and chronic, then the alternative is, as you said, the fidya. So now automatically, because the person is old, we skip fasting, okay? Like you said, it's very fatigued. He, we feel that he some bad is gonna happen to him. He cannot even fast for a few hours. That's it. So he give the fidya on his or behalf. Whether a miskin or fakir, one meal, one meal per person, per day. So if he 
did fast 10 days, alhamdulillah, remaining how many days? 19, 20, based on the moon citation. So you give 19 meals. Or if the person comes every day and he takes one meal, the same person, that is valid too. How to differentiate between miskin and faqir? This is a long story, but in brief, they say that the faqir is the one who may have food or provision. He's poor, but he may have food for like six months. And uh, miskin doesn't have anything. He's broke. So nowadays, we do not judge the person based on how much food he has for six months or for a year or for we know this person is needy he is living hand to mouth this person can barely afford to provide for his family right away he's faqir he is uh miskin so go ahead and give him or her or the family like a family of six uh, members so we give them the food for six people enough 10 people it will do it 10 days all at once and so on your mm -hmm. final question do i have to pay the account everything we own and possess no no one said so uh because i have a watch which is very expensive you don't pay the cat on your watch you don't pay the cat on your vehicle you don't pay the cat on your purses but they are named brands and they're very expensive gucci and Gucci and all of that you don't pay the account on anything which you actually use and utilize. The house, the vehicles, the shoes, the cars, the clothes. You pay the account basically on your surplus. The money which you, you save or the money which you're using for investment. Thank you, Sister Amna. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Alia from India. Assalamu alaikum, Alia. Walaikum salam, Sheikh. Um, I wanted to ask that during menses, are we allowed to recite the Quran as in like do tilawa from the mobile without touching the words of the Quran? Well, Sister Alia, as discussed before, there is a difference of opinion in respect of the permissibility for women during their menses to read and recite the Quran. Where the vast majority, Imam Abu Hanifa, or Shafi'i, or Malik, uh, Ahmed, and others are of the view that it is not permissible because of the Janaba. There are some other scholars who said it is permissible because there is no solid evidence that says you should not recite Quran during the uh, menses. It says you shouldn't recite Quran nor pray uh, if you are in Janaba. And the Janaba is very wide. Uh, a man experiences the Janaba after having sexual relations or experiencing with dreams. But for a man, he has an easy access to take a bath, ghusl, and then he is clean. But for something like that, which is experienced on a regular basis, maybe seven, eight, ten, or more days for women, so they said it is permissible. Uh, if you want to go with the opinion of the vast majority of the scholars, then the alternative is to recite azkar and dua. And if you recite Quran by heart or from your uh, smartphone, uh, following the second opinion, you're not blameworthy, and inshallah, you'll be rewarded for that. Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> Saad from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Saad. <clears throat> How are you? Go ahead, Sam. I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Uh, first of all, I want to pass my condolence on behalf of all for your father. May Allah Ta'ala grant him highest rank in Jannah, inshallah. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Thank you, Brother Sam. Jazakallah khayran. Uh, Sheikh, a uh, couple of days ago, uh, you steamed and uh, informed us that uh, at the time of sahur, if the azan is called, uh, one should stop eating and drinking and even spit out the food. So it, according to the hadith that, uh, I knew the hadith that one should can drink as long as uh, one wants. So I used to do that. I have stopped now, but uh, what about my previous uh, uh, fast because I used to continue drinking during the time of Azan. 
but it would not pass the adhan. For, for those who have been misinformed in the past, you're not blameworthy. And inshallah, you don't have to make up those days. But everyone should understand that when we have a hadith and we have an ayah, the ayah takes precedent. So the hadith is talking about a particular adhan. As you know, here in Mecca, in Haram, and in Medina, they call two adhans for Fajr. And this is ever since the time of the Prophet The time span between them is about 10-15 minutes. Okay. So the Prophet وسلم, as Al-Imam Nawawi and others say, is talking about the first adhan, adhan of Bilal. But the second adhan, Allah said, Hatta Hatta in Arabic, Hatta means up until once you hear the Adhan, that's it. You begin fasting. So whatever is still outside, it should not be admitted inside. I'm talking about not just the mouth. Outside my mouth or inside the mouth. So I spit it out. For the past days, uh, may Allah pardon you and me. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Well, brothers and sisters, it's time to take a short break and enjoy listening to another junior recitation, inshallah, during the break. And uh, while we're taking a break, I will be busy making dua for you, inshallah, right in front of the Kaaba, from the Haram in Mecca. Stay tuned. We'll be back, inshallah, in a couple of minutes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. All our phone numbers should appear in order on the bottom of the screen uh, for your reference in case you want to give us a call. Uh, we already have Sister Madiha from India. Sister Madiha from India. Assalamu alaikum. Madiha? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. I have a Go question. Ahead. Okay. I have a okay. question for you too. Yeah. Madiha, how old are you? I'm eight, uh, years old. eight. Eight years old? Eight years old. Allah. Yes. You're very cute, Madiha. And you have a question for me? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, Madiha. What is your question? My question was, I have, I've been fasting for the first of Ramadan, but I broke a fast because I was feeling weak. So will, so will Allah punish me? No, Allah loves you, Madih. Allah loves you so much. And I love you so much as well. Masha Allah. No, don't worry about it. I wish I can give you a gift right now. But you know what? Because I'm in a very special place, I'm going to pray for you. May Allah take you to Jannah after a long life. You and your parents, where you can enjoy all the toys and all the sweet and the candy you like. Thank you, Madiha from India, eight years old, has been fasting since the beginning of Ramadan, but whenever she feels very weak, she has to break her fast. She's asking, will Allah punish me? MashaAllah, MashaAllah. May Allah bless you, sister Madiha and your family. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Abu Aisha, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazana wa iyakum. Welcome to Ask with Abu Aisha. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. How are you doing? I just wanted to ask a couple of questions here. One of them is um, like if, that, if you are at the, at the uh, Haram, how many of your, know, how many Umrah can you perform? Is how many Umrah can you perform? Yeah, I guess you only. You I yeah. guess. I, I guess now. I guess now, by according to the regulations, you can barely perform one umrah. 
Yeah, I would decide, yes. But in case it is possible, how many do you think we can make? How many? <laughs> okay, what is your second question, Abu Aisha? The second question is in case we can do multiple and um, you run out of hair because you shave and you shave <laughs> and you shave is finished. <laughs> what do you do with that part of the, 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 the requirement? <laughs> Okay, you run out of hair and you run out of uh, strength. Okay. Of course, this what happens? There, Alhamdulillah. This what happens there. if you're bald headed and um, you don't have any hair in the first place, or if you perform Umrah and you shaved your head, and now in Hajj, for instance, Umrah comes first, so you shaved your head. What are you going to do? There is no hair to shave. There is no hair to cut. So in this case, you use the razor and you pretend you're shaving. You know, every day the, the hair will grow even by then the meat. So by removing that much, it will do it. But if you're bald head, then also by passing the razor over your head, the idea is to comply with the concept of tahallul, even if you don't have hair. Barakallahu feekum, Abu Aisha from uh, Mecca. Assalamu alaikum. Namira from Georgia. Assalamu alaikum, Namira. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, I, I would like to ask a question like, um, my uh, father gives me allowance every month to you know, buy things for something and all. So this Eid, I would like to buy gifts for my neighbors. So do I have to ask for his permission to buy gifts from the allowance which he gives? Because I think there is, uh, the, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said in the farewell sermon that um, women should give uh, charity from the husband's wealth only after their permission. So is this a general uh, principle or does it only apply to married woman well sister uh, namira may allah bless you and your family well basically once your dad gives you that money as allowance or as gift it has become your possession so if you want to spend it in something lawful like buying gifts to the neighbors it's a very good cause and it is absolutely permissible you don't need any further permission thank you sister namira Assalamu alaikum. Alia from Ireland. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Alia. Can you hear me? Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. Go ahead, I please. want to ask a question. No. Nah. Hello? I hear you, Sister Alia. You see it on the What is your question? Yes, uh, I want to ask a question about my husband. He is a revert, uh, and he has a brother who is still non-Muslim. And his brother, he uh, he is uh, he takes uh, drugs and uh, he is into many bad things, uh, and he is mm. also a gay. So he is asking my husband that is it permissible for him? To cut the ties with him because he's not doing anything related with Islam and he is into much uh, deep things uh, of okay. sinful things. Okay, thank you, Sister Alia. Basically, in Islam, the Almighty Allah commanded upholding the ties of kin and kinship, and this is stated in many ayat and many hadith and so on. Even if the relatives are non-Muslims. But when the person who is related to you is either corrupt or have a bad influence or like an alcoholic, then avoid cutting this person, avoiding this person becomes an act of worship. Because you love people for the sake of Allah and you avoid talking to them for the sake of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ boycott three companions who were very good because of a big sin that they've committed. So the idea of boycotting a person, even if he is related, if he's involved 
in such a heinous sin is permissible. Sister Alia from Ireland. Assalamu alaikum. Mahid from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. Uh, I oh. wanted to ask a question about uh, uh, telling past sins in Islam is prohibited. So suppose if I lie to someone about something and then if they ask me about it, what should I do? Like lying is also prohibited. So if I tell the truth that I lied, is exposing my sin, which is I lied to them. Uh, I'm feeling well, really uh, trapped here. Like, Mahid, what should I, I do? I believe, I believe I answered this question yesterday. I answered it in detail. So I would appreciate if you can check out yesterday's episode. That question was answered yesterday. Thank you, Mahi. Abu Mu'ad from the USA. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ask Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. I have a question. Uh, my question is, how do you do a uh, ruqya on someone who's afflicted with uh, sihr? And I would also like to uh, request a dua for a family member who's very sick. You know? No. Um, the ruqya, simply, for any individual, you recite any part of the Quran. It's valid for ruqya and powerful. And I said before, what we heard about Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, he used to recite for Rukya only Surah Al-Fatiha. Only Surah Al-Fatiha. So in other words, the entire Quran is effective, but it also depends on the faith and the righteousness of Ar-Raqi himself. So there is a list of ayat of Surah Al-A'raf and Surah Al-Baqarah, the ayat which talk about sihr and sorcery, uh, such as, the ayat of Harut and Marut. So if you want to recite them, fine. If you want to stick to Al-Fatiha and Ayat al kursi and the three last chapters of the Quran, that's fine as well. The person himself whom you recite al ruqya on has a very important role to play. So the ruqya will not be effective with a person who is negligent of the prayers, is negligent of the basic mandatory acts of worship, Rather, the person who is very vulnerable is required plus doing the mandatory acts of worship to do extra, the adhkar in the morning and the evening. It's like putting on your armor. This is the greatest means of protection against sorcery, against magic, against evil eye and, and, uh, and envy. Assalamu alaikum. Yahya from Kenya. Assalamu alaikum, brother Yahya. Assalamu alaikum, salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. How are you doing? Wa alaikum, salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing great. MashaAllah, Sheikh, I love you for the sake of Allah. Ahabbaka alladhi ahbabtani fi maydawanhum. You love me for his sake. Love you as well. Thank you, ya Yahya. Amin, amin. I mean, make dua for us, inshallah. You are at the Kaaba. Sure, sure, inshallah. May Allah pardon all of us and forgive us our sins. May Allah admit us to the highest wow. place in heaven, Al Firdaus Al A'la. May Allah forgive you and your family. Yahya, do you have any questions? Uh, my question is uh, there is a practice. I don't know whether it's a good practice, but. There is uh, uh, Let's take another caller, Abrar. And Yahya, please try again. I will be more than happy to hear your question. Uh, Abrar from this is the, uh, Abrar from Bangladesh. Uh, yes, sir. can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Uh, okay, I wanted to ask about uh, something. About something which uh, some scholars have, uh, have have said. The thing is that it's about the rotation of the Earth and the rotation of the Sun. Okay, so 
basically some scholars from the Saudi Arabia they say that uh, the rotation, the rotation of what? about the sunrise and also the sunset. Okay, and uh, the Quran of mm. Abrar from Bangladesh. Please try again. Assalamu alaikum. Abu Abdullah from the USA. Welcome to ask with Abu Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Salah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to ask with Abu Abdullah. Go ahead. Can you hear me, Abu Abdullah? Okay, try again, please. Faiz from India. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How, How are you, Sheikh? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm okay, alhamdulillah. And you? I'm fine, Sheikh. How is everything going there, Sheikh, in Mecca? The best, of course. Alhamdulillah. Fine, Sheikh. Uh, Sheikh, my question is, uh, Sheikh, you know, how did the process happen? Like what uh, did how did they do like practice yeah, the, during these last ten days? And uh, my second question is, uh, Sheikh, how like is it compulsory to make ghusl every day, or is it uh, is okay if I can just make it one? So, Fai is from India. Your second question: Is it permissible to perform ghusl every day? Yes, and multiple times every day if you want to. Okay, as long as you're not wasting water, uh, you know, fishing yourself. Looking neat, smelling neat, is a pure Islamic tradition. Uh, his first question, the attitude of the companions, may Allah be pleased with them in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Like the Prophet, peace be upon him, exactly. Fasting during the day and all night long awake, either praying or making tasbih or remembering Allah or supplicating or reciting Quran. Given any charity, Atikaf in the last 10 nights, uh, days and nights of Ramadan, upholding the ties of kinship, what we have been teaching and preparing people in advance to do. So we have learned all of that from the practices of the Messenger of Allah and his companions. May Allah be pleased with them. Assalamu alaikum. Abrar from Bangladesh is back on the line. Abrar, assalamu alaikum. Uh, Walaikum assalam, Sheikh. I needed to ask. About, I needed to ask about the sun rotation of the sun and the earth. Okay, so basically, yeah. the Quran talks about uh, the the Quran says that the sun rises and it sets. Okay, and the the wording of Hadith also says that it is a sun that rises and it sets. Okay, but okay, but from modern science, we know that it is not actually the sun that rises and sets. It's actually because of the rotation of the earth that causes sunrise and sunset, okay? So basically, some scholars from Saudi Arabia, they say that we have to take the wordings of the Quran and the Hadith literally, in the literal sense, that uh, we have to believe that it is the sun that does the, does, does the rising and the, uh, and the setting, okay? Not the Earth's rotation. So, uh, so is it like that? I mean, are we obliged to, is it obligatory for us to take those Hadith literally, or can we interpret those Hadith? Right now, in the morning, when you are on the shore and no buildings, and you see the sun coming, which looks like coming out of the sea, the kids will say, Daddy, the sun is coming out of the sea. It is rising, rising, rising. What does it look like for us? Sun rising, correct? Yes. Then, yes. if you're following, if you're following, 50, 40, 30 minutes before sunset. How the sun is declining towards the west. What do you call it? Literally. We call this call the, it? The, the sun we call is it, Thank you so much. We call it sunset. Okay? As a matter of fact, the Quran talks about it. Ishraq. Shining. And ghurub. Ghurub means disappearing. It doesn't talk about sunrise, doesn't talk about sunset. Allah the Almighty says, 
رب المشارق والمغارب يعني إن نظر آية سيز رب المشرقين ورب المغربين إن نظر سيز رب المشرق والمغرب And if you examine these three ayat, which I explained years ago, you realize that it comes in perfect, in perfect line with science, because it talks about various places of sunrise, based on the different seasons. Okay, so it doesn't rise like the sun goes above the earth. Both they rotate, but what does it look to you? It looks to you as rising. Allah calls it rather Mashariq. Okay, Magharib or Mashariq or Maghrib. So we call it according to what we physically examine by our eyes. When we see the sun going up and up and up, we say, oh, it's sunrise. And vice versa, <clears throat> we call it sunset. Thank you, Abrar from. Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. Abu Abdullah from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Abu Shai Abdullah. Salam. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We, we love you for the sake of Allah. We appreciate all what you are doing. Uh, my request is as you are in Makkah, please pray for myself, my wife, Hadika. And my kids, Abdullah and Fatma, may Allah make this word and hereafter a successful for us. Jazakallah khair. Jazana wa Thank you, Abu Abdullah. May the one whom you love me for his sake love you as well. And may Allah bless you and your uh, wife and Fatima and Abdullah, your sons, and make them comfort for your eyes. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum. Yahya from Kenya. Assalamu alaikum, Yahya. Oh, Unfortunately, it was that. <laughs> Yahya. Sheikh. Now, yes, go ahead. What is your question, Yahya? Alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just go ahead and say your question. Yeah, in my, in my area, there is a practice where once the imam is about to come and uh, make a sermon, either in Eid or uh, Eid Juma. There are some people who escort him. I don't know whether it is in the Sunnah, Sheikh, elaborate on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't hear your question. Oh, I was yeah, asking yeah. about, um, you know, there is a practice yes. where an imam is escorted by several people when he's coming to give a sermon or a khutbah in Eid or in Juma. So okay. I do wonder whether that... Okay, you're asking um, about people escorting the imam while he's giving, going for the khutbah? What is wrong with the, that? Yeah, he's giving... I mean, if somebody says, Sheikh Muhammad, where are you giving the khutbah? I said in such and such message. He said, I'm coming to pick you up. What, what is wrong with that? Then after I finish the khutbah, because as you know that most imams don't have rides. If, if there is something else, like a tradition that we have to go in a group or something that I'm not aware of, you need to explain it. Yahya. So I fear whether that thing is nah, because maybe they it might come up and it will be maybe a practice. Uh, you know, Yahya, do not exaggerate. You know, people like the Imam. People like the Sheikh. People have questions. People want to hear the word of advice. There is nothing wrong with that, that you are afraid in the future it will be a fitna. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of fitna is it. You know, the Sahaba used to escort the Prophet ﷺ to learn from him. All the hadiths say, once we were along with the Prophet, walking with the Prophet, going with the Prophet, coming with the Prophet, and we saw this, and we heard that, and we learned this. So, an Imam have knowledge. People have questions. Why did you call in right now? Because you have a question. 
You look at Imam and have certain knowledge. People want to learn from him. How would you learn? So they are taking advantage of from going to the masjid, they go along with him. Um, coming out of the masjid, okay, can I walk with you, Sheikh? Okay, I don't see any problem with that. Unless if you have something else in mind, please explain it. Others and sisters, I think we ran out of time, but we'll take one last call. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Nasser from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Nasser. Wa alaikum salam, hayakallah. Yes, Abdul Nasser, go ahead. My question was, uh, you know, uh, the dua, Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nooran wa fi lisani nooran, is it authentic? It is authentic. Oh, Upon going to the masjid, the messenger of Allah used to recite, Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nooran wa ja'al fi lisani nooran. وجعل في سمعي نورا وجعل في بصري نورا وعن يميني نورا وعن شمالي نورا وجعل من فوقي نورا ومن تحتي نورا وجعل لي نورا. This is a beautiful supplication to recite on your way to the masjid. Basically and in brief, uh, beseeching light from Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, in your face, in your heart, on your tongue, in your hearing, in your sight, on your right side, on your left side, from above, from beneath, and all over. Brothers and sisters, as usual, we're an hour of time. And it has been a pleasure to host you one more time in Ask Huda, to host this program. And inshallah, I will see you tomorrow at the same time, one more time in the blessed month of Ramadan. I will say this, and 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 I will say this, والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رمضان